Hi, this is Goose Studio. Right, okay, hello. <laughs> this is a sketch I am doing for a project. Undisclosed. <laughs> they can't really uh, describe the project. However, I'll show you the workflow of uh, how I go about uh, the, the drawing phase. Now, I would normally do it with a pencil and then pen because uh, I'm more comfortable with it, but this time around I thought I'd do it digital just so I could show it through video. So what it is, uh, it's uh, Mrs. Wilton I believe, uh, the uh, the traditional painting on the left, let me see, Mrs. Wilton by, uh, oh my brain's gone blank, but anyway there's a, there's a <laughs> flamingo on the right hand side, that's some of the studies I have made, I've made about six drawings, seven drawings of uh, flamingos, until I realized that uh, uh, flamingos are, you know, to look at appearance wise they're quite simple and I'm only going to be doing the, the head mainly so I stopped and I started to think about you know actually creating the piece so here I am just creating the the first layer of the sketch so it's going to be really rough just to get out all the shapes that's the one sergeant um, John Sargent. Is it John Sargent? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, that's not right. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, see if I can find the. I'm sure it's John Singer Sargent. But uh, here I'm just doing the wings and the dress, holding the flowers. I thought with the wings. And have them split, uh, kind of looking a little bit like fingers, you know, like so the feathers are like uh, split, splayed out a little bit, just so that you, it looks like uh, the, the flamingos holding the flowers in a certain way. But I wanted uh, the audience to see the wing and all its majestic uh, <laughs> appearance. Actually, I'll stop doing that. I think it's making clicks on the on the recording. Okay, so here I adjusted the head because I thought it was uh, a little bit off, so I've uh, moved it so that it's, it can follow the spine. I made the head bigger just so it's more exaggerated rather than just I don't know. Sometimes if you work with shapes, you can make a drawing more interesting. Uh, just by working with the size of the shapes. So here I, I thought I'd exaggerate the head just to give it a little bit more character. So it's not proportionally correct in terms of uh, you know what the flamingo anat anatomy is or it's not trying to replicate the look of the traditional painting. It's more to think about what is entertaining, what makes the viewer like uh, an interest you know, gain interest in the piece. So as you can see uh, from the traditional painting I've got a similar pose, I've got the dress like the uh, as you can see the uh, what the bodies do they call it? The bodies. Here I uh, created a little bit of value just to start to understand what the lighting is going to be, you know the, the lighting situation. This won't stick because this is not part of the project it's just for me to understand it a little bit more. In my previous uh, episodes I also did a master copy of the traditional painting which you can see if you look at my YouTube channel. Uh, here I'm just creating a few values just to understand a little bit further uh, the negative and positive space. You know, where are the dark values? Now I'm watching the video, I believe I'll also do the necklace and that little um, black neck band which I've not done in this drawing or this video. So I believe there'll be a second part to this video just to clean up the drawing. Uh, I thought I'd break the video in two just so that I can go back to it after a few hours or maybe tomorrow. Uh, I've got a, a clear idea of 
you know what what the drawing looks like and what I want to include and what I want to take out so it's good to look at it with a fresh eye again I'm just blocking things in just to get some idea with the values the, the atmosphere so here I noticed that the beak might disappear so I've got to think about the lighting situation and how you know how to work with it because the goal of the project is to kind of replicate the feel of the atmosphere from the traditional painting so I will need a dark background so I need to figure out how to make that beak pop so I might have some rim light or just some highlights and let the edges disappear into the background you know because I think you're able to understand that it's got a beak so here I'm, I'm refining the, the drawing and I don't normally draw on the computer so here I'm experimenting a little bit <clears throat> so at the beginning I'm really slow just to try and figure out the shapes and how, how the tablet works with drawing on it uh, later on I speed up it a little bit just to get loads of shape, you know, loads of lines in quickly and then I go back in to, to thicken up the lines if they're too loose so at the moment with the head I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, deliberate with my strokes yeah some a lot of times I'll start with the eye and then work my way around it other times I'll work with the shape of the head but because this particular subject has uh, everything seems to center around the eye so I thought I'd work on the eye first and then let the beak stick out of it so I'm, I'm, that's how I thought about working through that drawing I also worked uh, uh, with reference side of me as well so I had uh, another study of the uh, flamingo uh, with a, a, a face on view so you could see what the uh, flamingo looked like from the front view here I'm thinking about the perspective uh, what how you know I think I've possibly done the beak too large but then again it is more of an exaggerated piece so it may be able to stick of course the only problem with that, with that is whether it looks more like a swan than a flamingo so in the next part of the video I'll probably be working on the head a little bit more just to make it look more like a flamingo rather than like a swan or a duck etc so off camera I'll be looking and analyzing the drawing to figure out what I need to change and then when I change it I'll record it and put it on put it, uh, put it on so here I'm, I'm just refining the neck and uh, trying to replicate kind of like a feathery fur kind of quality with the lines I'm not like you know, un unintentionally doing sketchy lines I'm thinking uh, how to make it look like feathers it is hard to do straight lines with the tablet um, and the pen so what I do is I do some faint lines and I go over it with stronger lines just so it looks like a cleaner line I will be painting this piece in colour as well so it will remain a, 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 line, a line drawing and then I'll be painting it on top of it with colour using some new techniques that I've learnt now here I'm using a little bit of artistic um, license because you can't really see what that bow is looking like it's kind of uh, it's got a lot of hidden edges, you know, um, vanishing edges. Here I'm just sketching in some of the shadows rather than just putting the shadows on, just because just it has to be a line drawing. And now I'm working on the wing. So 
So yeah, again, just do it loose, light lines, and then afterwards just go back in and thicken the lines up. You can get fairly straight lines with the tablet, but I still think it's it struggles a little bit. And you have to have it the right direction, you have to rotate the canvas to be able to do the straight lines. Otherwise your lines become wobbly. Here I saw the, in the tr in the, on the traditional piece that she had like an armband. And I want to kind of um, put these accessories on the piece so that you can see, you know, that this is this lady. <laughs> uh, so I was, I was also thinking, how do you actually draw a circular armband on a wing that's kind of flat? So I thought, eh, I'll just do it as if it's like an oval armband and uh, she's got it on a on a wing rather than like a wrist because obviously obviously the bird doesn't really have a wrist or at least not on this piece you can't see it here I'm just drawing in the flower and uh, again it's it's kinda hard to see what it is so I just kinda uh, guessed it a little bit you know if I, you know to just tried feeling it out, feeling out the, the petals and such, just to understand what the heck it is. <clears throat> again, this is not on the traditional piece, so I just like, again, artistic license to figure out where the stripes on the bodies are. And also thinking about values when I'm going to paint it, you know, so like the, the armband is going to be lighter than that darkness in the in the stripes. So it creates a bit of contrast. So I think think ahead as well as what you're drawing now. At the moment, uh, yeah, just doing the, the fluffery. I don't even know what that is, but uh, I like it. I'll probably put that into the drawing. Yeah, I'm just darkening it up. Uh, staying far away so I can keep it loose. Because it is feathers, you don't want them to be really tight lines. Yeah, I'm just drawing the the finger kind of feathers. I like the idea of of this these uh, fingers from the feathers. I think I've seen too many Disney films where <laughs> the bird has like fingers instead of feathers. I I think the first one was uh, the Robin Hood. Disney film. You know, and they're like foxes and birds and such. The characters. I didn't use any uh, Photoshop tools like uh, measuring tools or I didn't use like selection tools. I just treat it as if I was drawing so it kept it traditional. Um, Undo I've rarely used. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I contradicted myself. There, there I used the undo undo tool. But I will use the undo tool if the, the lines are just not working. By that, you know, it, it just didn't work. But I won't use it all the time. Sometimes happy accidents do happen. Because I did a, a study of it beforehand, of the traditional painting, I understand, I understand subconsciously more about the painting when I first start it. If you go into it straight away and to design something, it's probably a little bit harder to, to work on because you have to, it's kind of like meeting a, a stranger for the first time, you know, you got to kind of get to know them. You know, hey, how are you, kind of thing. But with this, it, you know, once you've studied it for a while, for a few hours, you understand, you know, what what that is, what what this is, you know, this painting. So you know where all the key elements are, where all the values are, and such. So yeah, I'm just scribbling in some lines for the shadows. I want to keep it nice and loose because it's quite rumpled. Okay, I've got to think about that bit. That's where the um, the back of the oh, back of the character is. 
I'm going to think about perspective a bit more. So after the camera, I'll probably look at it and think, is this how it would really work out? You've got to think of anatomy and believability as, as well as it's... I know it's not believable, but you got to try and come across as if it's believable. So now I'm, I'm kind of working with line weight. How line weight works is um, twofold, you know, it's like the closer it is to, you, to the camera, to the viewer, the thicker the lines are, the further away it is, the smaller the lines are. Also it works with shadows, so where the shadows hit the surface, the, the lines will be thicker on the opposite side. But also, to make it even more complicated, you need to have thicker lines where your main emphasis point is, so this is going to be the head. So I want quite a few thick lines near the near the head, so that it creates a, a point of emphasis for the eye to go to. It's got more ink on it, blah blah blah, you know. Kind of do it here, but I'd be a little bit careful because I don't want it to grab too much attention so the lines aren't as thick <clears throat> but I do want them to be um, to be seen because, so this would be like the secondary point of interest with the holding the flowers and if you see the hands they're kind of going upwards as if they're pointing towards the head again so that's a compositional uh, tool you know, you've got to try and direct the viewer's eye. Yeah, just created the darker line underneath and above just to make it stand out a bit. Again, it's pointing towards the head. After a while, you start to do this subconsciously, you know, the compositional elements. Like, I didn't think about that, you know, when I was drawing it, but now I'm looking at it that's exactly what it is, it's pointing towards the head the main emphasis and then the head is pointing towards the body with the beak so it's interesting, it's like a, a circular motion you're looking up and down down and up so it's just pretty much cleaning things up right now you know I've got like one or two minutes left on the video so it's obviously nearly finished I probably did these a little bit too dark, however these are going to be almost black anyway when I paint it so it doesn't really matter so much I think I just wanted it to stand out from the feathers and whatever else is behind I want it to stick out so it's in front so it's really thick lines but because it's so messy that area it it doesn't really matter plus it's going to be coloured in dark so the feathers are going to be way more in front because of the contrast Just cleaning up the, the lines a bit. Alright, so it's nearly finished the video. I hope the process uh, has helped a little bit and and inspired to you know to get drawing but you know before you do a painting because it will help a lot during that process. Uh, like I said, there might be a second video on this just to clean up some of the lines or at least some of the uh, shapes and the composition and the anatomy just to work, you know, see it's going to be uh, not perfect but it's going to be able to guide me when I'm painting. Okay, so thank you uh, for listening today and uh, see you on the next video.